Hi, everyone. Welcome to Ladies Power Lunch. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am joined by just such a dear friend to me. You've probably mm -hmm. all met Dr. Laura Monk prior to now, but today she's going to be talking to us about something completely different from what she's come on the show about before. And that is she's going to be talking a little bit about her participation in the Ladies Power Lunch anthology series, which is called Be the Beacon. And as part of our launch for our baby book, Be the Beacon, we are hosting an outstanding live event. It's rolled right in with our Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit. Timing could not have been better on this. And so we will be bringing you two days of outstanding workshops. The main speakers are going to be the 20 women who stepped up, raised their hands and said, yes, I want to share with the community about what it means to be a beacon, a beacon of light, what it means to shine your light bright. And so I'm looking forward to inviting all of you to join us on October 18th and 19th for Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit called Grow Smarter, Be the Beacon. And I would also love to invite you to, when our book is launched, Be the Beacon, take a look at it because the stories are outstanding and the lessons are for implementation. So Dr. Laura, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us all the way in the United Kingdom, where right now it's what, 6 p.m.? Mm -hmm. There's, mm -hmm. there's quite yeah. a bit of a time difference between us, but you know you can't keep friends apart no matter time, <laughs> no matter distance. We'll always be together, and that's a wonderful thing. So welcome, welcome. Can you share mm. with our friends who are joining us here today who you are and what it is that you do in the world? Mm, thank you. Thank you, Davia. It's good to be here. And, um, yeah, lovely to talk to you as always. And um, what I do in the world is uh, I'm a certified VITA sex and relationship coach and I'm a certified sourced retreat leader and I help women reconnect to their sexuality and to use um, being in their bodies, being in their sensuality and their power to really create uh, a different second half of their life when they can understand that they their lives are not over, that their usefulness is not over, that by connecting to the true um, magical gifts and wisdom that they have accrued over a lifetime, um, that they have something to share in the world still. And that by connecting in, with the body, um, that this is a, um, a portal, really, an opportunity to share wisdom and um and lessons i guess lessons from life with their community um and, and for people looking for guidance you know but really um part of becoming older um and and moving through menopause and postmenopause really should be and hopefully more women will find that it's um that it is an opportunity um rather than an an end of life you know i love that thank you so much for sharing that i was wondering dr laura i know you love ladies power lunch i know you love me dearly as i do you i do <laughs> i know everybody can just feel the love just <laughs> flowing between us right now guys mm. this is my very very dear friend just want you to know but um laura why did you say yes to being a part of this anthology series and of course of our launch event grow smarter be the beacon why was that important for you i noticed you mentioned um as you get older that there's an opportunity for you to share life lessons and share wisdom what was it mm. about this project that spoke to you Mm. Yeah, so 
definitely shining your light. You know, um, I've written about an archetype called the, uh, the Marga Healer. And the, the Marga Healer is um, a goddess archetype. Uh, it's um, the Marga phase is from about 45 to 70. So, um, yes, menopause, postmenopause. And it's an evolution of the ancient triple goddess form maiden mother crone um it's actually devised by a, a, an english woman called uh, jane hardwick collings and she's identified this time of a woman's life there in the autumn or the fall um when women have got so much to offer mm -hmm. and can shine their light um and can be the beacon um, be the lighthouse for their community. So that's why the the title Be the Beacon <laughs> really spoke to me. Um, I was uh, studying the Marga Healer at the time. And when I was invited to contribute to this anthology, I was a big yes, because I could see um, that this was an opportunity to talk about the Marga Healer and to talk to women in midlife um, about the possibilities for their life because you know I know for many women it's a time it's a lonely time it's a time where um, it can be very confusing frightening depressing and disempowering if you um, as many women have internalized society's messages about how you're no longer useful you're no longer desirable you're no longer um attractive um you've no longer got anything to offer you know because society and culture we're so obsessed with the external um external of a woman um and and miss out on all these uh, internal gifts and you know actually i think really we are conditioned to fear aging and loathe aging you know we're sold all these anti-aging products you know to stop aging this is the message you know we have to stop aging and actually there are so many gifts in aging if we if we're open to the the beauty and magic and healing and wisdom of aging mm -hmm. it, it it's a, a wonderful time this autumn phase, this fall phase, it's a wonderful and magical time of healing, of reflecting, and being able to give the gifts that come from healing and reflecting and learning, to pass that on to the communities that we happen to be in. The community that I happen to be in is around sex, love, and relationship coaching. So this is what I want to um, give to my community around how sex and sexuality um, can be aspects, um, very powerful aspects of a woman's life to revisit and reconnect with in midlife. But really, the Maga Healer um, can shine her light in any community, um, wherever she wherever she is. So, um, so I've loved contributing to this this anthology, Be the Beacon. It's it's really important work yeah very very interesting and yes i i do know about the maga healer just because mm -hmm. of my association with you but I have to admit, it was not something that I had heard of before. Mm -hmm. So it's really mm -hmm. interesting that you're bringing this to the forefront. I also find it interesting that, yes, we do, as a society, really not embrace healing, um, aging, at mm -hmm. least not for mm -hmm. women. And everything is, all the ads are anti-aging and all mm. of this other stuff. I have these conversations with patients who come into my office all the time, male and female. And they say mm. to me, because they come in for pain that, oh, it's just a part of getting older. Mm. And my message to share with them that actually, no, it's mm. not. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. no, it's not. Actually, there is 
the possibility of being in this as you call it, autumn of your life, there's this possibility of being able to be healthy and pain-free and vibrant yeah. and actually using yeah. all, because can you imagine yeah. all the things yeah. that you've learned along your path up yeah. to this point, being yeah. able to share that yeah. with your community? That is beautiful. That really is an amazing is. thing. So, yeah. My my question that I have been really sort of mulling over in my mind, and I'd love for you to share with us what your thoughts are. When you think of be the beacon, what does that mean for you? What is that evoking for you as a beacon? Mm. What do you bring to the world? Mm. For me, it means shining your light as a lighthouse it means it means being a leader it means standing up being in integrity with whatever you're teaching so living your truth showing others the way just like a lighthouse or a beacon wood on the rocks to guide a ship mm -hmm. um to, to be able to speak to people that are looking for this kind of guidance that you're offering, whichever mm -hmm. light you're shining, and and saying this is the way, this is the path, this is how to do it, and and being it, being in the integrity, is 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 doing the things, being the things, not just saying them. So by the actions that you're taking, and by the life that you're living, and the conversations that you're having, the relationships that you're choosing, all of these things by by being in integrity with that, you are shining your light. You're out there in the world saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, this is how I'm doing it, and you can do it too. So I'm getting from what you're saying that this idea of being the beacon for you means more than just teaching the things that you've learned to your community, mm -hmm. but it also means standing up and owning yeah. that idea of leadership. And for some mm -hmm. of us, that can be a little tricky because yeah. we might be hesitant to embrace that we even are a leader. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we might yeah. be a little hesitant to take on yeah. that moniker. And then I love that you make that distinction about being the beacon, living the example, actually mm -hmm. just shining your light by the example that you are in the world. Yeah. I, I really do think mm -hmm. that that is what the embodiment of be the beacon really is. Mm -hmm. Do you have some advice for us, some do's and don'ts of mm. being a beacon. Mm. How can we better be, be a better beacon? How can we, what things should we avoid when we're mm. talking about being a beacon? Mm. Yeah, a uh, great question. Well, I like to um, promote and be an advocate for self-care, radical self-care. Um, and self-love uh, and self-pleasure. There are so many ways that we can use these three areas to, um, to be the best that we can, um, being through self-care, being um, the best versions of ourselves that we can be, which means that we can be there for others in ways that we can't be. Um, but be there for ourselves primarily um, and self-love is always the starting point for any self-healing journey and self-pleasure really is a medicine it's a beautiful um, tool for healing and nourishing um, using sensuality itself as um, a comforting robe um, when you're working with energy and sensuality, it's a real feel good energy that we can use for healing. Um, so I would definitely recommend self-care, self-love and, and self-pleasure 
as, as concepts to investigate um, and try out and experiment with. Um, and I would say the don'ts really are, don't let your age stop you from doing any of those things or from considering changing your life or from considering chasing your dreams and your desires. And don't let um, your background or your experiences, your history, uh, don't let any of those things hold you back. You know, we're all whole and perfect and divine just as we are. And um, we don't um, we don't need to let any of these conditioned um, responses and layers that other people have covered us up with hold us back. You know, we can we can connect to our to the light within and, and follow that, you know. Yeah. Beautiful. That is, that's, that's really some good advice. I, I know that when it comes to the idea of self care, that you are a huge advocate for that. Mm. And self care, especially I think during this pandemic time, self care Mm. is sort of an idea that's been banded about but I think sometimes we miss the point of self-care mm. and we might not be approaching it in the way that is really rich and meaningful and that can really mm. support our lives. So mm. I was wondering, would you be comfortable like sharing with us just a little bit more about how mm. we can tap into that radical self-care? Yeah, absolutely. I- I think a lot of people see self-care as just another chore, you know, another thing that they should be doing. It's on their list, self-care, and it gets ticked off. (laughs) Um, I can can attest to that, Laura, because I found myself after a while, I have my list of things that I do every single morning, and it was almost becoming rote. It was like I was just, Mm. okay, I going to meditate for x minutes i'm going to journal for xyz minutes yeah, i'm going yeah. i'm going to do yeah. yoga for whatever amount of time and it wasn't an enrich after what wasn't becoming an enriching experience no. it was just yeah, yeah an activity of rote and yeah. how yeah. can we get past that yeah so i think it's more nourishing and beneficial to think of self-care as something enjoyable so you know if you don't want to do those things if you don't find them inspired when you look at your list think about what it is that you would really like to do you know just actually take some time to think about what is it that I would really like to do what is it that would inspire me that um, would light me up that would nourish me, that would settle my nervous system, that would recharge or replenish, you know, to actually find the thing that you want to do. It, it, it could be anything. It might not seem like a typical um, self-care activity like those things you've listed. It might just be, might just be curling up on the sofa with a cup of tea and a, and a lovely warm fleecy blanket and just comforting yourself. I've got to say that yeah. sounds amazing right now. <laughs> yeah, just really feeling into what feels good. That's what I would say. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate you giving us permission to just lean into what feels good. I think there mm. is perhaps it's societal it might be more on our side of the pond than it is on yours but it's almost as though the enjoyment of life is taboo have you noticed that at all or is it just us over here no (laughs) it's a uh, it's a societal problem isn't that you know I think people are just too busy there's just too much to do and we've got information overload and it's so hard to unplug and switch off um, that maybe we've forgotten what enjoying ourselves actually means. You know, we, we're sold a lot of things that tell us how to enjoy ourselves. 
um, things that we spend a lot of money on, you know, but are they, are they really what's feeding us? Are they really what's feeding our soul? You know, some of the simplest pleasures, <laughs> just getting out into nature um, is, is enjoyable in a way that so many of these really expensive <laughs> treats aren't, you know, these things that are completely free. And, and there's so much research now to show how healing and nourishing nature is for us. You know, actually physiologically being around trees is healing. It does mm-hmm. actually make us feel better. You know, yes. so um, I think a lot of people have just maybe forgotten true, real, authentic enjoyment, you know. Yes. I that's one thing. I absolutely agree with that. Well, I know that we're going to go deeper and continue this discussion when you all come see us at Mm. our Ladies Power Lunch Fall Summit, Grow Smarter, Be the Beacon, Mm. which I hope everybody will have an opportunity to come to. One of the workshops that we will be hosting will be led by Dr. Laura Monk, and she will be really giving us some insight workshop style because you know my thought about integrating and learning things I don't really learn well unless I'm hands-on so Dr. Laura is going to help us out workshop style to really connect with what it means for us to be a beacon and I'm looking forward Mm. with great anticipation to your portion of the program Uh, Mm. Dr. Laura I know that people are going to be watching and listening and they're going to want to be able to reach out to you directly how can they Mm. connect with you Mm. well they can connect to me via my website uh, which is drlauramonk.com well that's Um, easy (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's and my email is info at drlauramonk.com. Uh, so yeah, easy to remember. <laughs> Beautiful. Want to say hi to Barb and Sandy watching with us over on the Ladies Power Lunch Facebook group. Oh, Thank you so lovely. much for <laughs> being a part of our show today. Really appreciate you. Thank you for your comments and your kind words for Dr. Laura. So greatly appreciated, you know, just the positive energy coming from all our members who are watching along with us really, really, we could feel it coming right Mm. through. So thank you guys so much. Dr. Laura, it's been a pleasure hosting you here. And I look forward to seeing you not just only on launch day, but also being able to be a part of this wonderful book that we're birthing together, Be the Beacon. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to you guys who are listening on the podcast. And we'll see you guys on the next show. Bye, everyone. Bye.